looking to hire a tile contractor in this video things you need to know before you hire anyone okay so you're thinking about uh, doing a tile job in your house it might be a bathroom or a floor or a kitchen backsplash or anything to do with tile so you've got a couple of options. You can either do it yourself or you can hire someone. If you do it yourself, you wanna make sure that you do as much research as possible to be certain that you know what you're doing and how to do it, what materials to buy and how to use them. This video is actually dedicated to the people that are thinking about hiring a tile contractor to do their work. So I was thinking about this and how, how can you know um, what to look for when you are going to hire a tile contractor? This video is about what you should look for when you hire a tile contractor, how to tell whether the tile contractor knows what he's doing or he doesn't know what he's doing. And it could relate to other kinds of, of contractors he might, might hire as well. So, the reason that I thought about doing this video is because I was reading a, uh, an article from the CTEF, which is the Ceramic Tile Education Foundation, which talked about 10 warning signs um, when hiring a tile contractor. But I am going to link to the um, to the article in the description below so that you can read it for yourself if you want. <clears throat> but I wanted to hit on some points that I thought were very important and possibly add a couple more of my own. So I'm going to read a little bit from this article here, uh, and then I'm going to, going to go through all, not all, but most of the, uh, the points that are, that are on here. I might even do them all. When hiring a tile contractor, you expect to have the work done right the first time. Unfortunately, you don't always have the benefit of seeing the contractor's work beforehand and realizing what you need to avoid. Uh, that's why we've put together these warning signs to help you about hiring a tile contractor who is poorly qualified, qualified and more of a tile placer. I love this. A tile placer. Uh, definition of a tile placer? Tile placer. A person who does not have the skills, knowledge, and experience to install the job correctly. So, you know, I just thought this was funny. So, if you hire someone that's not, that really doesn't have the experience, they're not a tile installer. They're a tile placer. In other words, they get a piece of tile, they put it down, and that's it. That's installed. That's actually not how it works. So, I, you know, I just thought this was funny, so I, I, I'd read it, read it to you guys. So I've done several videos on what can happen if you don't get the right person to install your tile. Um, you could have tile falling off, you could have a leaky shower, you could have cracked tile, you could have cracked grout. So, and I get, believe it or not, I get a lot of emails and a lot of questions and I, I hear about many, many failures. So, when you're installing, you're having your, your, your bathroom done or your kitchen floor done or whatever, you're going to be spending a lot of money. It's not cheap to install, uh, have a tile project. If it's just a little bathroom floor, it's not going to be a lot of money. But if you're doing your whole kitchen floor, you're renovating a master bathroom, and you have an idea in your head how it wants, how it's supposed to look, and you want to get it to look that way, and but most importantly of all, you don't want it to fail. You don't want to spend all that money and then find out you know, a year down the road, six months, five years, it's going to fall apart, it's going to leak, and you're going to have problems. I actually have a bathroom to do, a um, master bathroom to do in about a month, which I looked at, which was a steam shower that uh, was built about five years ago and it was leaking. So then they hired someone to tear it out and rebuild it. And as they were rebuilding it, the homeowner saw that the something's not right. So they called me and it was nearby. So when I looked at it, I talked to her and they were doing everything completely wrong. So now they've got a torn out shower with partially installed um, materials that all have to be torn out and redone again for the third time. And they've been living with this bathroom like this for months 
And because I am so busy, I looked at it back in, I think it was October, and I'm not going to be able to get to it till December. So they're living without, with, for months without this bathroom so that they have to use, fortunately they have another, another, another bathroom in the house. So it's not a, you know, it's, it's, it's not the end of the world, but they can't use the master, the master bathroom. And they already paid once to have it done five years ago. And now they tried to get it done again and they're back in the same boat and they, they contacted me and I'm going to do it for them. But I, they have to wait for me to have the time to do it. Okay. So how do you find a, a town contractor? Well, number one, a lot of times you ask around, you ask your friends and you ask if they know someone that, uh, that they would recommend as a tile contractor. And then they say, yeah, we had this work done. It looks great, et cetera, et cetera. And they give you the number. Now, this may or may not work out. Uh, I, I, so many times I've heard of people that have had tile done by someone that's been recommended and they do the job and, and it's not good. One of the reasons for that is sometimes the person recommending the tile contractor might look at the, the bathroom or the, the floor or whatever, and it looks like it's great, it's beautiful. But they're looking at it from an eye of a homeowner. They're not looking at it from an eye of a general, from a tile contractor or someone that actually knows what to look for. So it might look great to them, and, but there might be problems with it. And then a lot of times on the surface, it looks beautiful and it's perfect, but what's underneath is a problem. So <clears throat> even if you get someone that's recommended, a friend recommends someone, you still want to check out that person. Uh, another way you might find a, job, a tile contract, you might do a Google search for someone in your area and you might come up with a name, but you have no idea if it is any good or if they know what they're doing. Okay, so you got a name and you got a number. What do you do with the name and number? First of all, you want to verify that that name and number, as it says in the um, in this article, verify the installer's contact information. And like I said, I'll put a link to it in the, in the description. So you want to verify uh, the person is actually in business. So if they have a phone number and a name, if you've got a phone number and a name, you want to uh, be able to see if there's an address associated with, associated with that and you want to verify that with, with Google. So you got the name, you got the, not, got the, uh, got the address. Now you want to uh, check to make sure that you can verify it in Google. Once you've got, got that, you want to see if they've got uh, a website, a Facebook page or maybe um, Instagram and you want to make sure that you check that out and 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 find out all the information you can about this person you're gonna hire so number two on the list is payment and they asking for cash and are they asking for cash before they start the job you want to get for someone that you don't know and even for someone that you do know, you want to make sure you get a contract, have everything in writing so that uh, you know exactly what's going to happen and when it's going to happen and how it's going to happen. And if for some reason something goes wrong, your contract is what's going to help you resolve that problem. Make sure that the contract is signed and dated. A lot of times I, I do, I, I get jobs via email. A lot of people send me emails, etc. And then I'll go look at the job. I'll, uh, I'll send them an estimate and have a written, uh, have a written contract. And then they agree to that. Another thing that I find very helpful is the email chain. If you've got like an email chain chain, I always keep that. So that make so that's, that is associated with the job that I, that I have. So, have a written contract and then make sure that you, you, you know, if you, if you go on the email by email or text message or whatever, that you keep records of all that so that if there's ever a problem, you're going to have, uh, all your contact and all the, uh, all the discussions and everything that you had uh, available 
to be able to refer back to it. So if, you, if you're looking for a contract, a lot of times you'll get two or three prices, and most of the time they're going to be in the same ballpark. If you're getting the same caliber of tile installer, uh, most of the time they're going to be more or less the same. But if you find a, a price that's way too low or much lower than the other ones, or you get an estimate and you're only getting one estimate and the price is like fantastic, it's, it's low, that's not a good sign. Um, quality, installations, takes time, takes expertise, takes quality materials, and an understanding on, of how to uh, install those materials. If you're getting a specialized system, then you want to be sure that that person knows how to install that system. Like myself, I, I have been to many uh, trainings for Schluter, Mape, uh, Laticrete, um, Weedy, um, Artex. I go to as many trains as I can. So I, I actually understand how to do all this stuff. And I've actually attended training so that if there's something that I don't know, they'll show me. If the price is too low, probably that person doesn't know what uh, he's getting into and probably doesn't have a lot of experience installing tile. You want to have someone that's been installing tile at least for a couple of years. This is actually mentioned in, in this article as well. Well, not all of what I just said, but, 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 but most of it. So if the price is too low, too good to be true, it probably isn't. So you want to make sure that you want to have the price of the installation be adequate and sufficient so that the installer can do the job properly and not skip any steps and cut any corners. Because if they're, if they're not getting enough money to, to do the installation properly, they're going to cut corners somewhere because they're not, they want to make money. People in, in business to make money. They're not in business to to uh to to give away their, their their time and their their experience another thing is that you want to make sure that they do this full time that they're not like just doing this on the side it's not some handyman or some some guy that's got a, a full-time job and then on the weekends he does a tile installation to make extra money it's extra money for him but it could be also extra money for you because you have to do it again so be sure uh that the person that's doing the job has the experience, knows what they're doing, and is is trained in the materials that he's using, or has at least at least has experience with them uh, that, that they can install it properly. So number four, <laughs> so number four, check references. Now, this is not a, a, a foolproof method because a lot of times, you know, you ask for references and they might give you an uncle, an aunt, a brother or a sister, a friend or whatever, but you want to check them anyway. Or if they don't want to give you references, then that's a big warning sign because either they don't want to uh, give you uh, the name of people that done work for because they're not going to, because if you call those people, Maybe they're not happy with the work, so they don't want you hearing about bad work that they that they did. And then most, if a tile contract has been doing great work, they're going to be happy to give you the name of people they've done work with because the people that they that they've done the work for and they're happy are going to be happy also to tell you how great uh, the experience was and how wonderful the installation was and how happy they are about it. So. If you give them, if if you ask for references and they don't want to give them, that's a that's a that's a pretty that's not a good sign. People that do great work are going to be happy to give you references, and the references that they give you uh, from past work, the people that you're going to call up are going to be happy to tell you about their experience and how wonderful or great or the the, the installer was and how well they did. So references is important. But you also have to be cautious uh, to make sure that the references that you're giving, that they're giving you are, you know, just people that they've, that they know, that they, that, uh, that, uh, that they've,
giving out so that you can call them and they know that they're going to get, give you a great reference because it's an encore or not or whatever. So uh, you want to make sure. So you you know you, you want to get the references, but you want to be careful also when you check them. Another thing is if they do give you references, make sure that you can reach them. Don't just get the reference and sell it. They gave me three references or four references or two references, and they just just not check them out. So if they give you references and you and you and you can't reach them, then they probably don't exist. Uh, another one here, number five on here, uh, is do you feel like you're speaking to uh, to a wall? So if you're asking a tile contractor uh, uh, some questions on how they're going to do it and you know what what's involved, uh, how long it's going to take, uh, what materials they're using, the system they're using, the tile contractor should be happy to answer all your questions. If they understand the product they're using and they, 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 they're going to do it the way it's supposed to be done, they're going to answer all your questions. You shouldn't feel like, you know, you've got uh, vague answers which really don't answer the questions you ask. They should be specific and they should be accurate and they should be, should be to the point. When people ask me questions about uh, how I'm going to install it, I give them all the information they want. I make sure that they understand what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. So if you're if you got if you're hiring a, a general, um, tile contractor and you're asking him questions and he's not giving you the proper answers or he's not not make giving you um, make satisfying you with the answers that he's giving you, that's a warning sign. If the answer is I've been doing this for 20 years, just trust me, I know what I'm doing, I'm the expert, and they don't tell you, explain to you how things work, uh, that's not good. You're going to be losing the use of your kitchen or your bathroom or whatever you haven't done for a period of time. And so you have to feel comfortable that the person that is doing the work for you is courteous. Uh, they answer all your questions. They respect your, 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 your house. And, and you feel comfortable having them come into your house every day. And if you have any concerns, you can talk to them. And they're gonna and they're gonna put you at ease, and you're gonna feel comfortable having them continue the work. So another thing is, uh, is it possible? Is it impossible to reach a tile contractor? So I get a million calls, and I actually have to ignore a lot of calls because it's just there's just too many of them. I get so, but. Once I start a job, I make myself available to that person that I'm doing the job for. If they have any questions or have they any, uh, have any concerns or if they need me for whatever reason, they can reach me on my cell number, they can email me, they can text me, they can do whatever, whatever, whatever however they can to reach me. And I always get back to them. Sometimes you can't get back the instant they call because it's just not possible. But you always want to have be sure that that person that you're having do the work for you will return your calls or answer you or, or get back to you within a timely fashion. If you call a tile contractor and he doesn't get back to you for, for days on end or he never gets back to you, that's not a good good sign. You want to feel comfortable. You want to feel that that tile contractor is working for you and he's trying to do the best possible job for you and that he respects and your questions or your concerns and then he can put you at ease whenever you have a problem most of the times when i'm doing 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 work people will ask me a ton of questions and i'm, I'm happy to answer them and like i said if they have a question or they need something or they see something <clears throat> they can call me <clears throat> anytime and i will answer that question to make and make sure that they they're happy with with the answer Communication is key, and the ability to communicate with your with your with your contractor, with your tile contractor, when needed, is very important. Another point here, yeah, is are your tile project requirements being ignored? So, in other words, when you uh, hire a tile contractor, you have uh, a vision of how your bathroom's going to work or look, or your kitchen floor, or your or your backsplash, or whatever. Is the tile contractor moving in the direction that's taking you to realizing that vision? 
is ignoring what you want and just doing it his own way. Uh, of course, sometimes, you know, people ask for stuff that just can't be done for whatever reason. But, you know, the tile contractor should talk with you and explain to you, you know, how best to achieve what you want in a realistic way. So you have to be comfortable that what you're envisioning is actually going to ultimately be completed and it's going to going to be finished the way you want it. So you want to be sure that the tile contractor understands what you want and he can he can you can discuss it and and, and figure out a way to get where you want to be with your tile installation in a in a proper fashion in a in a, in a, in a way that follows proper methods and standards and you have a tile installation that you're going to love and is going to last as long as you want it to and isn't going to fail prematurely. If you, if you, if you talk to your contractor and you say you need this and that and the other, and they're just ignoring what you're saying and just going ahead, not a good thing. Okay. Okay. So another point here is why can't you see examples of previous tile installation projects? So <clears throat> for me, I have a YouTube channel. I have over 760 videos. I'm always posting videos on Instagram, on, on, uh, on Facebook, on uh, wherever. You can actually see me install uh, tile projects every step of the way. And you can see how I do it and the, and the finished product. So I am a big proponent of this, of showing your work so that other people can see it. Not every tile contractor has a, has a YouTube channel, but they should have a portfolio of some kind. So if you ask to see uh, other work, they should be able to show you some pictures. If, if they don't have pictures, they should have a website, or they can show you on the website, Facebook page. Um, um, you know, they ha they should have a way to show you their other work. A lot of times, uh, not a lot of times, but sometimes people. Uh, that you know that I'm going to be doing work for. They want to see my actual installation, and if I'm on a job where I'm doing installing something in the middle of it or whatever, I'll invite them over so that they come look at the job while I'm doing it and see how it's coming along. And so you know, you make them completely comfortable that that you know what you're doing, and the work is going to come out great. But you have to also be aware because a picture is easy to, to, to fake. In other words, there are a lot of unscrupulous uh, people in the world. And these some of these tile contractors will get other people's uh, photos and they'll get other people's work and they'll, they'll, they'll push it off as their own. So you want to be careful and you want to be, be able to verify that the work is their own own and not someone else's that they're just showing you so that they can get the job that's that's where references come into play as well because they show you a picture they show you whatever right and then if you have a reference you can verify that 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 is actually their work so uh, another one number nine here is uh online reviews so if the contractor that you're uh, thinking about Hiring has a lot of bad online reviews, like consistently bad. That's a big red flag. So, you know, if someone's got like one bad review, it doesn't necessarily always mean that the tile contract is bad. There are some, some, you know, there are bad customers as well as bad, uh, bad installers. So, you know, you got you got to be logical about what you're. Uh, what you're reading if but if they're consistently bad like every review is bad uh, you might want to look somewhere else so the last thing is how much experience do they have you don't want someone that's just getting started that's not a good idea you don't want someone that's you know just figuring it out and learning on on your installation using your money you want to get someone that has experience Myself, I have 35 years experience, but in and, in and of itself, 35 years is not sufficient. Now, you might get the guys that says, oh, I've been doing it 30, 30, 20 years, 30 years. 
but has never taken a, uh, a training course, has never gone anywhere. They're just doing it the way they were taught 30 years ago, and that's, that, that's what they know. I'm a member of the NTCA, so I have resources to find information, and I have technical support when I need it. And if someone, if you hire someone that's a member of the NTCA, you're probably getting someone that cares about their craft. Another thing you can do is get someone that's a CTI certified tile installer. I'll link to those websites as well in the description. I'm going to link to the CTF. I'm going to link to this article. I'm going to link to the um, to, to the uh, TCNA. I'm going to put a bunch of links in the description so you can verify all this stuff. But as I was saying. Experience counts, but experience with continuing education and training also is very important. I've got a few of them here. This is not all of them, but I have, I go to as many as I can. So I have all these trainings that I've done. done. I'm a pay. Laminam. Ardex. This one was back in actually 1986. 1986. This wasn't related to tile, but it was a, a training back in 1986. Where the hell was it? 1986, right there. And then I've done a bunch of, of shooter ones here. Shooter. Shooter, 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 more, more shooter. I've done them. We've got a bunch of these certificates. So, you know, I go to as many trains as I got. I'm actually going to a, in, in later on this month, I'm going to a, a ladder creed uh, training PTK. You know, so uh, it's, it's something that you want to, I do these trainings and I'm proud to show and I'm proud to, to, uh, I actually might have one in my wallet. So this is one of the ones that, that, I've, that I've done that I keep in my wallet. So if you're an installer that's, that's been keeping current with new systems and up to date, you're going to be proud and you're going to want to make that known to your customer. So also another thing that I keep on my desk all the time, the reference manuals. That's just a catalog. And see, so when I need to know something and look up something, I have them at hand. I actually have copies of this in my truck just in case I need them. It's not often that I need them, but it's good to have when you do. And if you have a discussion, sometimes I'll have a discussion with a, with a GC. Little story. I actually, there's a GC I do uh, a lot of work for, and a great guy, and he's always particular about getting everything done right. So he always liked to leave the baseboard on. And I was always arguing him that you should take the baseboard off and then install it afterwards. And he was like, I don't like the look. Well, I'm like, I'm like well, you know, if you don't like the look, then I'm going to have to leave a, a soft joint all around the perimeter, perimeter to allow for expansion and contraction. And so he says, says, I don't believe you. You don't need, it doesn't need expansion and contraction. Show me where it's written. <laughs> So I actually went to my truck, got my TCNA handbook. I turned to the page that talked about EJ171 expansion and contraction, and I showed him where it, where it said, showed him the, 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 the ANSI specification for expansion and contraction. Since that day that I showed him about that it's actually written, and he asked to see it written, he actually now always takes the baseboard off. Well, not takes it off. Well, he'll take it off if it's on, but if it's, you know, remodel, he'll, he'll let me tile and then we'll, then we'll put it on. Sometimes it's like some areas where you, you can't do that for whatever reason, but 99% of the time it's off now. I don't have to fight about that anymore. And, if, and then expansion joints in the, in the field. Got that resolved too. So having the information is Getting someone that has the information and then you ask for it, he should be able to show it to you. Okay, so I hope you found this useful. Just a few points 
um, what to look for and uh, how to tell if a tile contractor is any good and if you're going to get a good job. Just in case you have never seen my videos before, my name is Sal de Blasi. I'm a tile contractor in the Boston areas, and as I've said earlier in the video, I've been doing this for 35 years. Uh, I have a YouTube channel. It has over 760 videos on uh, how to install tile. That's all tile-related. Well, mostly tile-related. Um, if you need to know how to do something on uh, about you know with tile, more than likely I have that in a video somewhere on my channel. Um, so leave your comments in the comment section below. Uh, if you can support me on Patreon, that would be great. Uh, I'll leave a ton of links in the description. Uh, in, in, yeah, in the description, I'll leave a, um, some links in the description to the CTF, NTCA, TCNA, um, a bunch more. And uh, one most important thing to do is subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe. And thanks for watching.